Next up on the Hooks in MMA podcast, we're lucky to have on 7 and 1 Welterweight. He's currently on a six fight win streak, and he's back in the cage on February 25th at the PFL Challenger Series 2. We got Delano, the postman, Taylor. How's it going, man? Going pretty good. It's going pretty good. How you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. Appreciate your time. And just, uh, you know, we, we always like to kind of in, introduce uh, our, our chat with just, you know, what got you into the sport? Um, basically, you know, any other uh, uh, sports that you got into when you were younger? And ultimately, you know, what did, uh, how did you decide on MMA? So, so um, how I got into the sport was, I guess, a little conventional. I felt like I kind of fell into MMA. Uh, I wrestled in high school. Of course, I did a bunch of other sports and stuff like track, cross country, I played a little football. Um, never played basketball or anything like that. But when I wrestled in high school, I I, I, did, I think I did pretty pretty well overall in high school, but I just didn't get the results that I wanted. So um, when I was wrestling, I had this kid, a teammate of mine who did MMA, and his grandfather would always be like, hey, you know, Delano, you know, come come, come through and train, you know. Um, I come from, like, a single-parent household, so we didn't have money like that. So I was like, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll come through, you know, like, one day or whatever. So... I graduated high school, I got my first job to help, you know, just help my mom out and stuff like that. And then help, you know, of course, pay for whatever I wanted to do. Came and checked out this gym because I guess I was so hungry from the wrestling. I didn't like the results I got it. And when I came to the gym, they had like a, like a, a free week trial. I'm still, I still train at the gym to this day, you know, That's cool. and stuff like that. Yeah. So they had a free week trial. And I remember doing every single class, like, three times a day like it was crazy I was like yeah, I, I like I like this and um when I started training everybody was calling me like John Jones John Jones that's uh that's my that's my John Jones and at the time I didn't know who John Jones was I was just confused I was like who's John Jones who's this guy like I, I knew nothing I'm a man when I first started you know even just doing jujitsu I started with jujitsu and then I and then I started uh Muay Thai boxing and then um I remember everybody was like annoyed to roll with me. They were like, man, they go that wrestling kid. I ain't trying to wrestle with that. I ain't trying to roll with that wrestling kid. Oh, he's so, so crazy, so spazzy. And um, I remember after like three months of training, my jujitsu coach gets me an MMA fight without my consent. Oh, um, he got me a fight on three days' notice. And uh, I remember I remember walking into the gym. He walked into the gym. He looked at me. He started laughing. He was like, <laughs> and this is when, like, I used to come to the gym like really early. I'd be the first one in here. I still am the first one in the gym normally, but I'd be the first one in here. I just start hitting the bags just to like understand like technique and learn stuff on my own. I mean, I was three months in, so I was, it was still super relatively new. And I remember him saying, you know, he's, he's uh, Brazilian. And he came, he came, he laughed. Drew Fernandez is his name. He came and laughing. He was like, <laughs> I got you a fight. And I was like, what? He's like, I got you a fight. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, what well, are you scared? And I was like, no, I ain't scared. When's the fight? And then he's like, uh, you fight Friday. I was like, when? when? When Friday? Next Friday? Nah, this Friday. I mean, uh, not Friday, Saturday. I'm sorry. He's like, you fight Saturday. I was like, this Saturday? He's like, yeah. Like, today's Wednesday. You mean this Saturday? Saturday coming up? Yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Um, what weight do I got to be? He's like, you can make 170. And at the time, I was like, around like 175. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I can make 170. He's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, you fight on Saturday. And I was like, I remember thinking to myself, like, damn, this man really called me scared. Like, trying to call me out like I'm soft or something. Like, are you crazy? That's awesome. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I go out there and I take the fight. And I win the fight in the first 30 seconds. We're naked choke submission. And I was like, okay, I like this. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm going to keep doing this. And it's just been on a, a journey from there. Yeah, and you've been rolling. That's a great story. Love that. Love hearing that. Um, yeah, what I noticed uh, with, with your upcoming uh, bout here against uh, your opponent, who I just actually talked to about an hour ago, is, uh, you know, the quality of competition that you fight. So you're in Titan FC. And uh, for me, they're, you know, one of the better promotions in the entire world. And, uh, you know, you, you got five wins there. Um do you think that's going to play a factor, your experience and the types of guys and the promotion that you fought in? Um, of course, I think every fight, every fight that I've had plays a huge role in my experience. I mean, my last two fights alone, I fought 60 minutes. So, I mean, that's an hour of cage time alone, experience-wise. Like, 
not a lot of people can say that they gone sixty minutes in a cage. You know? Especially if you you fight a bunch you fight a bunch of guys who get like first round finishes, like they don't understand like what it's like to actually have to push, like go through those. Like I feel like in the fights that I've been in already, I've taken so much, I've experienced so much already, like damage wise, fight IQ wise, like. I feel like there's nothing that anybody can show me right now that I haven't seen. Like the last fight I, I had, like the guy was throwing like spinning kicks at me at my head, like crazy. Like he was throwing overhands, all types of crazy stuff. But I've seen that before. I've trained for that before, you know. So it's not like something that's gonna be super overwhelming to me. Um, I like to say that my record doesn't match me anyway. So it's like I'm seven to one, but realistically speaking, who cares? Like I can yeah. fight a guy who's twenty doesn't matter to me. Like a fight is a fight. At the end of the day, you have to fight you have to see me in the cage. That's it. And that's, that's the kind of attitude that, uh, you know, res- results will come. Right. So, um, yeah. So in, in terms of your opponent, uh, you know, um, what have you seen from him maybe from his fights and just, you know, anything, uh, that stands out to you about him? Um, from his fights, I've seen that, um, I noticed, I, I noticed a couple of similarities between him and I, like we had the same, basically the same record, literally like side by side. It's, Exactly the same. Like first loss was our second fight. Um, he's gone like a lot of fights like via the distance. So of course he has mad experience too as well. Um, so that's not something I'll, I'll put past him. I feel like he's very he's intelligent. He's an intelligent fighter IQ wise. Um, I feel like over overall though he's not me. He's not as fast as me. He's not as, expo- as explosive as me. I mean he's a wrestler, but I'm a wrestler too. So. And I feel like people don't understand that I'm a wrestler. They try to take me down and then they get stuffed or they get put on their back or they get submitted and they're like, oh shit, this guy can wrestle. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. like you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even like something that I'm super overwhelmed. And I'm not putting anything past them, of course. I, I don't put, past, put anything past anybody. I'm still doing my work. I'm still paying my dues. I'm still in the gym, you know, doing my stuff three times a day. And, you know, of course, my extra credit work, you know, I'm not sleeping on him or anything like that. But, you know, all respect to that, man. But I feel like, um, He's not me. You know, he hasn't been put in the same positions as me. He hasn't been put against the same opponents as me, caliber of opponent-wise. Like, he, he hasn't seen the same guys I've seen or have dealt with the same kind of guys that I've had to deal with. So that's not something that I was super, um, super worried about, you know? Yeah, yeah. So Comes what about... Camp. Yep, yeah. I was just going to say, what about, uh, you know, that call? Um, obviously, you've been on, you know, the radar for for promotions i'm assuming um what, what was that call like was it your manager relaying that to you we have an opportunity here you want to jump on it like how did how did how did that go uh, after my last fight my management hit me up about a week later saying you know pfl uh, has like really serious interest in you and i was like oh okay that's, that's what's up you know like that's cool that's cool that's cool um so i was just i was just happy you know just excited for the new opportunities to come, you know. I'm feeling super blessed about it. I'm ready to just go out there and do what I do, just perform, deliver, like the postman, you know. Absolutely. Um, and the uh, just outside of training, outside, well, you're saying you're doing three a days, but uh, what are some hobbies you like to do other than fighting just to, you know, keep you keep you balanced, I guess? Um, I like to actually do just, like, little things outside that are aside from fighting. That makes sense. Um, like I'll probably go go to the park twice a week if I can with my little brother, just play some football or go play basketball, or just something to just throw my mind off fighting because at the end of the day, there's more to life than just fighting. You can't just always be thinking about overwhelming to the brain. I feel um, it's almost like fighting. I feel like so a lot of people can be like a drug, you know, like you want to do it so bad, you want you want so much more of it, but then like you have to understand that like drugs have effects. Have consequences, you know, like yep. it, it becomes like overwhelming and overstimulating to the brain, and you need to understand that you need balance. And I feel like everything, everything comes with balance, you know. So I just like to be outdoors. I like to actually enjoy nature. I like to actually spend time with my family, you know. Because at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, you only you always got your family, you know. Yep. Yeah, it's it's all about the support system around you, for sure. Um, yeah, so just to finish up, we have a one minute uh, between rounds segment. I'll ask you a question. You give me your best answer, okay? Uh, favorite sport other than MMA? Woo! Uh, damn. 
That's crazy. I like to play ultimate frisbee. Nice. I like ultimate. Uh, what about uh, favorite spot that you've traveled to in America? Favorite spot in America? I didn't really like Vegas too much. It was too noisy for me. Uh, I like I liked um, when I traveled to Virginia. Virginia was pretty fun. Cold, but it was actually really enjoyable for me. I never saw snow before, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, we got lots of it where we are right now. So, um, what about uh, favorite kind of music? Uh, reggae or R and B? Favorite movie of all time? Pulp Fiction. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of my top ones too. Uh, what about uh, favorite couple of mixed martial artists of all time? Uh, of course, Israel Adesanya. He's pretty cool. I like him a lot. I like Kamar Usman's. I like his I like his mentality. I like how he goes about uh, portraying things. But I think my most favorite MMA fighter is Jason Jackson. He's also one of my teammates. But I, I think he's like my best. He's really, really good. He's really good. He's like an inspiration to me. Like I admire him a lot. Um, Jason Jackson is like that guy for me. Um, uh, fight wise, he's he's yeah. done he's a lot for the sport, and I feel like he hasn't gotten enough credit. But no, his time right. will come. Don't get his credit. It will come. It's it's coming. He's he's been on a roll, so I I can't wait to see him back in there again. Um, yeah. So just any sponsor shoutouts or social media to finish up. Um, shout out to Versa Climber, of course. They're pretty cool. Uh, Thrasher Hemp. I like those guys a lot. Um, Flush Free LLC, Cash Now Funding. Um, who else? Junior Fernandez. <laughs> Junior Fernandez Jiu Jitsu, Sanford MMA, Victory Leaf. Uh, these guys that are like just helping back me, you know, support, little support system I got going on. I appreciate those guys a lot. Awesome. Uh, so, February 25th, PFL Challenger 2. Really looking forward to seeing some deliveries uh, from the postman, Delano Taylor. This is Hooks in MMA. Thanks so much, bro. Appreciate you. Oh, okay. No worries. Next up on the Hooks in MMA podcast, we're lucky to have on four, sorry, three and one uh, late heavyweight. He's going to um, open up the PFL Challenger Series uh, with their, their opening card here on uh, February 18th. And uh, looking forward to, to watching those fights and, and all the stuff moving forward within the PFL. The Carl Williams, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Uh, tomorrow's Friday, so it's always good to you know, end the work week and, uh, you know, just kind of relax and watch some sports on the weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, just uh, speak speak to uh, growing up, uh, any of the sports that you may have played and what ultimately kind of got you into MMA. Um, growing up, I did, well, I moved to America. So when I moved to America, I started doing wrestling. That was my first sport I ever played. And then my wrestling coach, he went and started coaching football. So I just followed him. I went and started um, playing football. Then he went and coached track. So I started running track. So, yeah, had a good coach. So, yeah, you, you that's, don't what, that's what got me into sports. Yeah, you don't forget coaches. And uh, if you still call them coach years later, that, that's, that's a true coach, right? Oh, definitely. And, um, Sorry, I'm playing with these keys. I know that's getting picked up. But, yeah, great coach, great guy, great person, great human. I mean, just great all around. Um, he's still coaching up to this day. He actually coached me in my last fight, which I was very sad because the first time he get to coach an MMA fight, other than wrestling, you know, he has the state championships for wrestling, different things, and then I did not do what I was supposed to do. I did not follow the game plan. So I felt real bad. So <laughs> I have to uh, make it up to him. You know, yeah, so and you and you will. Them up. you will. Oh, definitely. We have this. This is just the beginning of this career, so there's a lot more fights and a lot more things to go on. So I'll make it up to him. Yeah. So what I was we, like, dang. I yeah. Because <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, uh, when did you move over to the states? And you, you're from the Virgin Islands, right? Yes, sir. So I moved in. I moved here. I think and when I was 12, my memory is real bad. It's okay. Football, not MMA football, I blame for it. But I moved there when I was 12, and summer when I was 12, yeah. And I started sixth grade, 
and yeah before that no sports just being an island kid you know <laughs> yeah um so you had a you had a very successful amateur career and then you you kicked it off with um three straight wins um obviously you know put your name on the map and and out there for some of the bigger promotions to to take a look um and then like you said you you did lose your last fight so what what have you learned since that last fight uh, in the B2 fighting series um just be more patient with certain things um that was a game plan to begin with and then you get in there and you see certain things and you're like go for it but i mean Nothing but, I mean, it's my, look Look at my opponent's record to begin with, you know, which isn't a thing on anything. I mean, his record shows itself. Like, you make a mistake, he's going to capitalize on it. He's not 12 and 3 for no reason. He, he was in the PFL. He was in Bellator. You know, he, his record now 13 and 3, but he's, he's a seasoned vet, so you can't make certain mistakes. And, you know, still... Um, I wish I had more amateur um, fights, but couldn't find the opponents to, to fight. That's why I respect everybody I fight because they help me build on learn. So, yeah. So coming off of that last one is just be more patient and, you know, you got to watch and, you know, stick to the game plan. That's the biggest thing I learned. Stick to yeah. the game plan. Yeah. I, and you'll, I'm sure you'll do that here in your next fight. So what, what was that call like uh, from the PFL? Um, from them asking you to be a part of their first, uh, their, basically their first card of the uh, the Challenger Series. Uh, I mean, amazing. Uh, it's a long story about the night, but I was supposed to be going to Russia to do bare knuckle boxing because I was supposed to fight. Um, I was trying to fight on 20, February 26th, and I wasn't hearing nothing back. I was trying to get different fights, and a lot of the fights I was getting were like two weeks ago. Like, uh, then two weeks to actually game plan and do different things. So, but I was supposed to fight February 26. So I was kind of gearing up for that, but you know, you kind of set your, your fight accordingly. So I was, like I said, planning, I didn't get that fight. Then I started to plan for the same date, but in Russia, I was supposed to do bare knuckle boxing in Russia. Okay. And that was a whole process in itself. And my coach called me, um, I think Wednesday last week, he was like, I got good news and I got bad news. Coach Jukal. He's like, I got good news, I got bad news. I was like, well, give me the bad news first. He's like, you're not going to rush. I was like, dang, because it was a very good, it was a very good opportunity. So I was like, dang, I can't go. He was like, but I got good news. I was like, okay, what's the good news? He was like, well, you're going to do the PFL Challenge Series. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I didn't think, I didn't know they, was, they were even having it. You know, they always keep, the, you know, behind the scenes, everybody keeps stuff secret. So I didn't know anything about it. And... I was just like, dang. So I, I was just happy. I was excited. It, it was a, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I look forward you got, to going out there. Yeah. You kind of got like some bad news, but then it ended up being pretty good, a little closer to home too, right? Exactly. You know, like the Russian one, it was, it was a, financially it would have been a bigger thing, but it wouldn't account for anything other than like you went to Russia and, you know, try to revenge for Rocky and Creed and, you know, stuff like that, the movie stuff. But other than yeah. that, it was the help for the MMA, you know. So this was a lot better to home. And I think, I'm not sure how it happened, you know, but I think he canceled Russia for the PFL stuff, which I'm very happy for, you know, just to be able to keep doing the MMA and working towards what I'm, you know, my goals. So... Yeah. Absolutely. So um, next, next month here, we, we open it up and uh, you fight against an undefeated um, uh, fighter who's actually, you know, 22 years old. Um, what do you know about him and how do you think you stack up against uh, this uh, gentleman, Simeon Powell? Um, I haven't heard much about him. You know, I think he's from London and he's been fighting over on that scene. Yeah. And I've so I haven't heard much about him. Like I know about the local people and different things that I'm, you know, keep an eye on because on a reach, especially building up, you don't know how many local fights you need to make it to a bigger stage where you actually have to look at the international people. So I haven't heard much. I have watched his film. Um, I think he has two red naked choke finishes and different stuff. He he sees the game. And he's a tall opponent too, so it's it's gonna be a good one. So I think it uh I think 
I think, and I know we should test each other's skills and then, you know, then the car, the cards fall where they may. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it, it seems to me like just from an outsider, from a fan's perspective, uh, you know, it's, I see that uh, three of his four uh, fights have ended in the first round. So if you can maybe use your wrestling and get into that second, maybe third round, you might wear him down. Is that, that uh, fair to say? Um, it's fair to say, but man, you get with some of these people, I don't know his coaching out, you know, I'm not sure what they do over there. Um, as far as like, as far as his gym, not London, but just as far as his gym, how their conditioning is, they might have like crazy conditioning and he just finishing people. And then next minute, like, I think like, okay, let me go in there and wrestle him. And then it's like, oh, his gas tanks might be bigger than mine. Yeah, know, yeah, the altitude sure might be different over there. You know, that's like trying to wrestle somebody from Colorado. Yeah, like, It yeah. sounds good. You know, but then when you get there, you're like, I don't know if my lungs are ready. Yeah. But we're working, we're working towards, um, you know, always for the 15 minutes. And I, most of our stuff is over 15 minutes, you know, because you never know. You might have to do a five rounder one day. So we always work more than what we we plan for. Yep. So, and I would yeah. assume that he's doing the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so outside of training, I know you said you got three and four days. Uh, what are some of the hobbies you like to like to partake in? Hobbies? Ah, uh, what am I doing? I built a gaming computer. Uh, I just do random stuff. So like random, um, like built a little swing set for my well, re re and uh, from my gaming computer. So I'm trying to go on Halo. So if you play Halo, let me know. Um, <laughs> So, and really just training and being a family, man, honestly, not really too much extra. I work on cars, work on houses. It's just what's available at that time. Once yep. it's hand-related, I'm good now. Other stuff, I'm like, I don't know. But <laughs> if it's hand-related, like building something, then I'm good. So, awesome. Like, I think I might have to help one of my friends redo a uh, like, time in between training and the fights and different things to help re remodel their bathroom. So, yeah. Awesome. Those are the, those are yeah, the weird. If anybody's listening, uh, we got a handyman here, so you can reach out to him. There you go. There um, you go. <laughs> yeah, just to, to finish up, we do a between rounds segment, one minute. I ask you a question, you give me your best answer, okay? okay. What's your favorite sport other than MMA? Track. Uh, favorite track athlete of all time? Got to go with Bolt. Yeah. Bolt or Safa Powell. Yeah. Yeah. Legends. Um, what about uh, music? Who's your favorite kind of music? Country music. Favorite uh, artist? Uh, you got Darius Records. Um, Hootie. Hootie and the Blowfish. There you go. Um, Jason Aldean. Mm, I'm bad with names. That's why. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, Derek, uh, not who I'm saying. Uh, got a little mud on your ties. Uh, uh, Brad, that's a Brad Paisley. You do the commercials now. Brad Paisley. Yeah, me and my grandma used to listen to Brad Paisley all the time. We bought the CD, everything. Big and Rich. Yep. So, yeah, country music. Yeah. Yeah, me, me too. So I, I was able to help you out there. I, I know my there stuff as well. You, thank you. No problem. Um, what about uh, favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie? Uh, I always have like multiples with stuff. Um, Gladiator and the Fridays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about uh, if, so I, myself, I haven't been to the Virgin Islands. If I ever went there, where would you tell me to go? Uh, to go check out? Linquish Beach. I have to go to Linquish Beach. Okay. And, uh, a and couple of don't years. pay for parking. No. Let them drop you off and don't pay for parking. Walk in. Okay. Don't pay for parking. Liquid heat. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, yeah. And what, who are your favorite uh, MMA fighters of all time? Just a uh, couple of names. Ooh. I don't... Mm. I don't have any, sadly. Now, there are people I'm watching, I, um, I like to watch and I do respect, like, um, always the Lima Brothers... Um, having me seen much of St. Pierre fight 
because I'm as far as watching sports, I'm new. I'm still new to watching MMA. Yep. So I'm like going back to catch up for stuff. And like, yeah, I don't, yeah. like I play football. I never even watched it. So I went in. I like Kamar Usman. Like he's yep. a great guy. And um, I like how he, his fights go. You know what I mean? It's just that grit. So, yeah. yeah. But I don't have really a favorite, especially if you go start going old. Like I meet like the real, like one of the um, people at my gym, they're a real MMA head from like way back, like 16 years and stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so I, I apologize. Uh, it's all good. And do you have any uh, sponsor shout outs or social media you wanted to, to, uh, to tell? Um, Family First Security, um, Instagram, Carl G. Williams, Facebook, Carl G. Williams. Um, yeah, they, everything, yeah, Carl G. Williams. And Family First Security, Triad Mechanics, if you need your AC, let them know. And your Family First is a security company for your cameras. Um, yeah, that's about it for now. I'm working on sponsorships. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to get them up. I'm, I'm new to this stuff. Yeah, I did all it good. one time, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure this stuff you, out. You're, you're going to get them. I, I promise you that. Um, thank you. Thank you. So uh, PFL Challenger Series 1, that's on February 18th. It's the first card. Um, we got Carl. I'm gonna call you G Dub Williams because you're gonna get the dub, <laughs> you're gonna get the W that night, and thank you, thank uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, to watching that card and watching you uh, get your hand raised. So good luck to you, sir. And uh, this yes, is sir. Hooks, Hooks in MMA. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, thank you. Next up on the Hooks in MMA podcast, we're lucky to have on seven and one welterweight he is fighting uh, for pfl on the pfl challenger series on february 25th mark showtime martin how's it going today man hey what's up man how's it going yeah going good uh even going better here knowing that you're pulling over safely to the side of the road to talk to us <laughs> uh we're, we're, we're thankful for that um so yeah let's just get it started here just tell me uh you know growing up what kind of sports you played and what got you into mma uh, so growing up, I played basketball and football, and I wrestled. Uh, my brother, I was playing basketball at first, and then my uh, my brother kind of got me into wrestling. We fought a lot, and uh, it kind of just made sense to uh, follow him and uh, try it out. So I started wrestling at like eight, and then um, I ended up going to Ohio State, wrestling there, and uh, and then started fighting like a, a year after I graduated. Not even couple months after I graduated. Awesome. Um, and I'm a big sports fan myself. Uh, I played basketball growing up. So I saw your height, six feet. I'm also six feet. Uh, what position did you play in basketball? And, uh, you know, where did it go from there for you? Uh, it was so long ago because I only got to play for a couple years because it was the same season as wrestling. So okay. at like one point I was playing basketball and I was wrestling. And then by like 10, I just stopped and I uh, would just wrestle in the summer and then play football in the fall. But I, I want to say I played like shooting guard. Okay. Point guard or shooting guard. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I miss those days, but uh, I'm able to coach now uh, and give back, which is uh, that's what it's all about, right? Full circle. Um, yeah. Yeah. In terms of MMA, um, you know, obviously seven and one, as I mentioned, six fight win streak. Um, you know, you've had some really impressive wins. And uh, obviously, you eventually got the call here for the uh, PFL Challenger Series. So how did that come about um, after fighting for Combate Global? And, uh, you know, was that like from your manager giving you a shout saying you have this opportunity or how did that kind of shape up for you? Uh, so they kind of been on the radar for a while now. They hit me up for a, a short notice fight. It was like three or four days notice uh, back in like September. So they, uh, you know, they, they've been on the radar, but uh, it just wasn't the right time to, to take that fight. You know, like I said, three days notice, I had to make weight and all that. It was just a little bit too soon. But uh, I got hit up about this back in December, and uh, it kind of made sense. You know, I mean, I wanted, obviously, the, the first option was like a UFC short notice type or contender type opportunity. Yep. but. Uh, you know that you know. I think that'll always be there. You know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, for now, for now, uh, you know, I want to win this fight and then uh, get in that tournament and uh, fight all the top guys. Absolutely, and uh, you know, 
PFL, you know, had an amazing year last year. Um, I've, I've watched them for years now, but it's, it seems to be getting better and better. And now they've added this challenger series. So in terms of your next opponent on the 25th of February, Delano Taylor, um, similar in terms of, you know, seven and one, um, same record as you. And, uh, you know, he's obviously coming into this, uh, hoping for the same thing as you. And uh, just wondering, you know, if you've watched any tape on him, how you think you stack up against him? Uh, yeah, so when they, uh, at first they just sent out a list. And it was just a list of names, but they didn't match us up yet. Yeah. But other than one person, I didn't really notice. Uh, I didn't know any of the names on the list. But when they started matching us up, uh, you know, that's when I, you know, me and my coaches started to look at some film and stuff like that. I probably only watched like two or three rounds from one of his last fights. So uh, I got a pretty good idea of what, you know, what he wants to do in there. Awesome. Um, again, coming up here and uh, well, now it's February 1st. So uh, under four weeks here. Um, good training camp. How's that been going? Yeah, so I'm always training, but uh, like the last six weeks, I'll uh, I'll kick it up. You know, my last few fights have been short notice. But, uh, you know, this one, you know, I got, you know, six, seven weeks. So that was perfect. And then uh, my boy, Jared Cannonier was already in camp getting ready for Brunson. And I'm a southpaw wrestler. So that's, you know, that was a good look for him. So I've been doing hard rounds for, you know, over a month now. So uh, the killer gor ready to go. gorilla. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been getting some good work in, good sparring, good uh, grappling work, all that. So yeah, we're and, both uh, ready to go. Yeah, we're big fans of him, too, with a uh, big fight coming up against Derek Brunson. Uh, looking forward to that banger. Um, yeah, just outside of training, outside of uh, fighting, what, what kind of stuff do you like to get up to? Uh, when I'm not in camp? Yeah, yeah, just like uh, uh, hobbies. and. Yeah, uh, I like to travel a little bit. I like to – I got a couple of friends in Cali, so I go, you know, kick it with them, chill on the beach, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I like to hike especially out here in AZ, you know, so it's nice all year round. A lot of trails you can hit, uh, a lot of shit to do outside. Uh, I like the hoop, obviously. Uh, I try to stay away from, like, you know, four-court games and all that because yeah, I don't want to yeah. tweak, tweak nothing. But uh, I just, you know, I like to shoot around and stuff like that still, though. Uh, really, I mean, that's about it. I hit some pool parties, too, in the summer. Yeah, there know, we go. Some of my friends, shit like that. But, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, other than that, mostly just training. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And uh, uh, to finish up, we do a between round segment. One one uh, minute, I'll ask you some questions. You just give me your, your best rapid fire answers, okay? Like a one word answer? Uh, or like a short sentence or something like that. Uh, All right. What's your favorite sport other than MMA? Basketball. Do you have a favorite player currently? Currently, it was it was Kobe for a minute. I like uh, I'm trying to think right now. I don't really have a favorite player right now. What about team? Do you follow the Suns or? Uh yeah yeah, yeah. the Suns been hot lately. Uh, I yeah. like the Suns. Uh I guess you could say I like D Book. I like yeah. D Book. Uh, Westbrook ain't been doing so hot lately. I hear, but I I like Westbrook too. I like his attitude and you know he get after it. But, uh, yeah, those two players probably. And uh, favorite place to travel to? Uh, Miami. Miami for sure. Miami and uh, San Diego. Okay, so the coast. Um, and uh, favorite couple of uh, mixed martial artists of all time? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, my favorite two, I'll go uh, in the cage or does just style either, of fighting? Or either what? or, either or, whatever you want. Uh, if we just talking pure skills, I'll go with uh, John Jones and GSP. Those are my two favorite for sure. Uh, legends, and I uh, can't wait to see Jones back in there soon. And um, sorry, uh, favorite kind of music? Rap, hip hop. And do you have a I favorite? I like R&B too. Favorite artist? R&B. Uh, Gucci, Future, my top two. Awesome. Um, any sponsors, shout outs, or social media to finish up? Uh, no sponsors for this fight, but uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at 
Showtime Martin won. Yeah, and every anybody listening here, um, you know, make sure that uh, we get some sponsors for this guy. You got to watch uh, him on February twenty uh, fifth. Yeah, Sorry. so for this fight, I guess there's no uh, no logos, so uh, it's weird. But I mean, they could you could sponsor me, and I'll post it on my on my Instagram. I got pretty good following for uh, you know regional fighter. So there we go. So let's let's get that out there. Um, once he makes it eight and one in a few weeks here, uh, let's get on that. And, uh, his next fight when he can post some banners, he'll, he'll get that out for you guys. Um, really looking forward to, uh, the PFL challenger series. It's uh, going to be the second show, uh, February 25th. And we got Mark Showtime Martin sharing some time with us today. Good luck, sir. This is Hooks in MMA. All right. Thanks for having me. No problem. You take care.